Okay, let's begin with the first type which is function equation. So what exactly is function equations? A function equation problem will give you a function in equation form and then ask you to use one or more inputs to find the output. In order to find a particular output, we must plug in our given input for x into our equation. And the function can be any function. It can be a linear function, quadratic function, exponential function, any function. Like in this example, we have a quadratic function. For the function g defined above a is a constant and g of 4 equals 8. We have our input. This is our x and this is our output. Y. What is the value of g of minus 4? These questions are very simple. You shouldn't definitely get your marks deducted here because these are easier questions. All you have to do is do simple calculation. Let's replace the values and see what do we get. So when I replace x with 4, I will get 4 squared into a plus 24 and that gives me an output of 8. There you go. I'll get my a from this equation. 16 a plus 24 equals 8, 16 a equals 8 minus 24, which is minus 16 a equals minus 1. So my equation basically becomes g of x equals minus x square plus 24. So now I have to calculate g of minus 4, simply replace x with minus 4 and what do we get? Minus minus 4 squared plus 24. Be careful with the sign. This is this sign is with the equation and x is also negative in this scenario. We have minus 4 squared is 16 plus 24. Minus 16 plus 24 is positive 8. This is our answer which is option choice A. That's it. Let's have a look at the second situation which is function graphs. A function graph question will basically provide you with an already graphed function and ask you any number of questions about it. These questions will generally ask you to identify specific elements of the graph or have you find the equation of the function from the graph. So long as you understand that x is your input, this is your input and this is your output, y is your output or f of x, you are safe. Let's have a look at this possible question. The complete graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above. For what value of x is the value of f of x at its minimum? f of x at its minimum. Can I say y at its minimum? It's the same thing. If you understand this, we are done. So where is the y at its minimum, the function output at its minimum? You can see this is the minimum point of the graph. And which x value is representing this y value? It is this. This is our answer, which is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. At x equals minus 3, we will have the lowest value of y, which will be the question can also ask you the lowest value, which is minus 1, minus 2. At x equals minus 3, y will be minus 2. This is the lowest value. But right now, our target answer is this, which is option choice B. Let's look at the third scenario, which is function tables. I've covered this in linear equations as well. The third way you may see a function is in its table. You will be given a table of values both for the input and the output and then asked to either find the equation of the function or graph the function. So again, the question is very typical, uh, the same thing that we have been discussing in earlier videos as well. So we have our input, we have our output as well. Some values of the linear function f are shown in the table above. Which of the following defines f? So you have to form the equation, which is y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. Let's find out our slope first. Let's take these two values. Okay, y2, this is our y2, y1, x2, x1. Okay, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our gradient is basically 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And let's take this point to form the equation. It will become y minus 5 
equals 4 into x minus 1. This is our equation y minus 5 equals 4x minus 4, y equals 4x minus 4 plus 5 is plus 1, which is option choice C. Very simple. Oftentimes, another strategy for these type of questions is to plug in answers to make our life simpler. Although that's an easier uh, strategy, but sometimes it might cost you time. So you will have to put in these values in all of the option choices. Let's say if I put this value in our option choice C, it will satisfy this equation. It's very simple. So if I put, let's say, 1 and 5 into this equation, let's see whether it satisfies the equation or not. 5 equals 4 into 1 plus 1. 5 equals 5. There you go. Hence, C is our correct answer. Lastly, we have the nested functions or the composite functions. You can also call these composite functions. So what exactly are composite functions? Let's have a look. The final type of function problem you might encounter on the SAT is called a nested function. Basically, this is an equation within an equation. So if you want to understand the practicality of this, let me explain through an example. A couple of years ago, literally, I went to my father's office and I saw that there was a fax machine, there was a printer, and then there was a scanner. There were like three big machines there. But now, things have completely changed. You have all these things in one system now, in one machine. You have a printer, you have a scanner, and you have a fax machine as well. That's a composite function where you are combining multiple inputs to get one output. That's the, that's the practicality of it. You have a coffee machine, you can make coffee from it, you can make tea as well. So that's a composite function again. Let's have a look at this. What is f g of x, x minus 2, sorry, when f of x equals x square minus 6 and g of x equals 3x plus 2? So first of all, you need to find f, g of x. So, <coughs> what have we replaced here? Earlier it was f of x and what did we do? In place of x, we have replaced g of x. That's it, very simple. So, in place of x, you will replace g of x. So, f g of x will look something like this. Now, instead of x square, we will have this part. We'll have g of x. 3x plus 4 whole squared minus 6. This is fg of x. We have put this function into f of x. So let's open this up. This is quadratic. It will become 9x squared plus 2ab, which is 2 into 3x, which is 6x. 6x into 4 is 24x plus 4 squared is 16 minus 6. So this will become 9x squared plus 24x plus 10. So this is basically f g of x, but we are not done yet. Our final answer is f g of x minus 2. So now in place of x, we will replace x minus 2. And see what do we get? 9. Now what do we do? In place of x, we have x minus 2. x minus 2 whole squared plus 24 x minus 2 plus 10. This will give us our final answer. So I have chosen this problem because it seems like a little complicated, but that was the entire intention as well. If you understand this, trust me, you will be able to solve all the sad questions when it comes to nested problems. Okay, let's open this up. 9 into again a minus b whole squared. It will be x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 24x minus 48 plus 10. So we are left with 9x squared minus 4 into 9 is 36 minus 36x plus 36 plus 24x minus 48 plus 10. See, it looks a little difficult, but it's not. It's simple calculation. Now just combine the like terms. 
9 x squared minus 36 x plus 24 x that leaves us with minus 12 x and plus 36 minus 48 that is minus 12 minus 12 plus 10 so we are left with 9 x squared minus 12 x minus 2 this is our final answer let's look at the option choices no this is wrong not even close 9x squared minus 12x plus 4 no our answer is 9x squared minus 12x minus 2 which is option choice d now let's have a look at a couple of more questions involving all these scenarios a function f satisfies f2 equals 3 and f3 equals 5 a function g satisfies g3 equals 2 and g of 5 equals 6. What is the value of f g of 3? It's a composite function and we are not given either f of x or g of x. So you should understand that you need to find both the functions. But we are given points. Our one point is 2, 3. This point. Our second point is 3, 5. And for g of x, again we have two points. 3 comma 2 and 5 comma 6 that's it so if you have two points you can easily form a linear equation we have already studied this so what exactly is f of x we need to do some math here for that we need to find the slope first which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 this turns out to be 2 divided by 1 is 2 now let's just plug in the values into this equation y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1 let's take this uh, coordinate y minus 3 equals 2 into x minus 2 this is our f of x y equals 2x minus 4 plus 3 which is basically f of x i'll write it here so that I don't get confused 2x minus 1 is our f of x similarly we need to find g of x okay for g of x our slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is 4 divided by 2 equals 2 let's apply this equation again I will take this point y minus 2 equals m into x minus x1 which is 3 so our equation becomes y equals 2x minus 6 plus 2 which is basically g of x equals 2x minus 4 this is our g of x so now we need to find f g of 3 let's first calculate g of 3 which is 2 into 3 minus 4 you simply replace x with 3 or whatever is given that's the trick and g of 3 is 6 minus 4 that is 2 now we need to find i'll draw a line here so that we don't get confused f g of 3 so that is basically f of this value we already have g of 3 so we need to calculate f of 2 so let's replace this x with 2 and we will get 2 into 2 minus 1 which is 4 minus 1 equals 3 a very interesting question and therefore our answer is this beta let's have a look at this function graph question which of the following could be the equation of the graph above let's just evaluate this graph so it is above the x-axis it is going upwards remember the rules of graphs it is f of x plus z whenever you add a constant into the function it moves the graph z units upwards and it's a quadratic function what's a quadratic function it can be x squared plus a constant now we need to look at the option choices x square plus 2 yes a can definitely be our answer x plus 2 whole square you are adding a constant into the value of x this should move the graph two units to the left and in option choice c we have f of x minus z 
this should bring the graph downwards and this should move the graph two units to the right. Yes, A is our answer. We have an interesting past paper question here. Let's have a look at this. Question 17 and 18 refer to the following information. We will do question 17 first. The quantity of a product supplied and the quantity of the product demanded in economic market are functions of the price of the product. The functions above are the estimated supply and demand functions for a certain product. The function S of P gives the quantity of the product supplied to the market when the price is P dollars and the function D of P gives the quantity of the product demanded by the market when the price is P dollars. How long, sorry, how will the quantity of the product supplied to the market, product supplied to the market change if the price of the product is increased by $10? You can pause the video and read the question again if you want. So basically the quantity of the product supplied to the market is given by this function S of P equals half P plus 40. This is the function we are looking at. If the price P of the product increases by $10, the effect on the quantity of the product supplied can be determined by substituting P plus 10 into the equation. So earlier are basically, let's have a look at this. Let's say this is our function. So F of X means that we are replacing X into the function. Now we have X plus 10. So we need to replace P with P plus 10 because the price increases by 10. That's something you need to understand. So our new function basically becomes, you can say S of P, I'm just writing N because this is our new function with the new price, half into P plus 10 plus 40. Let's simplify this. We will get half P plus 5 plus 40, which is half P plus 45. This is our new function, which basically shows that what is happening now, S P plus 10 equals S of P, our original function, plus 5. So basically, the quantity supplied to the market will increase by 5 units when the price of the product is increased by $10. Very interesting question. Alternatively, look at the coefficient of P in the linear function S. This is basically the gradient of the linear equation. Let's say this is the slope of the graph of the function where P is on, on the horizontal axis and S of P, this is on the Y axis. So if you understand, since the slope is half, what is happening? For every increase of one in P, remember we talked about the relationship, we talked about the gradient, for every increase of 1 in P, what is happening to S of P? It is increasing by half. So if P increases by 10, what is happening to the output? It will increase by 5. That's another way to look at it. Let's look at question 18. And sorry, I forgot to mark the answer for question 17, which is option choice B. The quantity supplied will increase by 5 units. Okay, question 18. At what price will the quantity of the product supplied to the market equal the quantity of the product demanded by the market? This is simple. Literally, you have to translate this. So S of P equals D of P. This is what the question is asking. You have to equate both the equation and find out the value of P. So we will get half P plus 40 equals 220 minus P. You just have to solve this. Just combine the like terms, half P plus P equals 220 minus 40. You take the LCM, you will get 3 over 2P equals 180. Simply again, do not multiply. P equals 180 into 2 divided by 3. Now 180 divided by 3 is, I know this is 60. 60 into 2 is 1. 20. $120 is our answer, which is option choice B.